Kia Stinger launched. So that was on Kia. What is that website? Let me just find it out. It is on kiavirtualautoshow.ca. So that's where this video is. It's about a seven minute video. We're going to go through it a little bit today. And we're going to talk about the specs and the figures of the car, which I have done a little bit in the past, but we're going to go over it. And that's how this works. Now, if you're just joining us for the very first time, usually we say skip ahead to the three minute mark. I can't see exactly the second we're at right now. So just bear with me for a second. What I need to do is all right, we're back. Okay, sorry about that, guys. All right, so we're going to get the video that you see up on the uh, screen. I'm just going to refresh my page so I can see that as well. And that will mean that your comments will show up for me, and that will help me out tremendously. So what we're going to do is go home here. All right. Home screen, live now tab. All right. Oh, I get to watch an ad about kayaking in Nova Scotia. That's definitely speaking to me. This is definitely a targeted ad. All right, skipping that ad. Oh, there's another ad here. Uh, skincare for men. Obviously, somebody's seen my videos. Excuse me. There we go. We skipped the ad. All right. I see myself on my video. So what we're doing today is the Kia Stinger is new for 2022. Now, it's not all new. It's not brand new, but there are a lot of tweaks and a lot of important things. So when you look at this, if you're an average car person, you're going to say, looks the exact same to me. And uh, it will to the average person. However, to someone who's a Kia nerd like myself, there's a lot of nice tweaks in this car. And I want to give you a brief history of my history with this car. When this car launched, I, of course, was doing videos like I do now. Uh, Kia USA saw my videos. I got to go to the United States, to um, Los Angeles. I got to film uh, YouTube videos for Kia Motors uh, United States or Kia Motors America uh, on the Stinger. So those two YouTube videos were up recently. I don't know if they've taken them down yet now. Uh, but I followed this car around. I've taken it to the racetrack. I've taken it all over the place. This is a car. I'm even wearing a jacket that says Stinger right now. Um, I followed this car around quite a bit. So we've, uh, you know, if anybody knows this car, I feel comfortable saying that I have experience with it. So, you know, sometimes I misspeak, misspeak on something. And I may say that, um, but you know, I'll do my best to, uh, be as accurate as we can. So where are we going today? We're going to go through this video because it has a couple new images that you haven't seen before. Uh, and I'm going to review the specs a little bit here and I'm going to take your questions here. So, Hey, Peter from Orlando, Florida. We've got a few people on exciting news. Uh, clicking it now. Somebody's watching. Okay, so we got a bunch of comments in here. That's good. All right, so uh, I don't know how many people we have on. You guys will know that better than I will. 18 watching. Okay, so that's probably enough. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to slide my cursor over here. There we go. And we're going to hit play on this video. Now, you won't hear any sound because I am going to mute it, but I want to talk about a few things that I see. And we will skip through some of this. So uh, sometimes these videos are harder to do for me, uh, but uh, I want to just make sure that we show you some things. Now, let's see if it works. Come on, hit play. There we go. So, Kia drifting in the snow. You can see that new logo is all over the place. New wheels, new rear lights, uh, new front look a little bit. Uh, that's going to talk about a few features in here. There's that engine dash and interior is all new. The new logo on the steering wheel, all parts of what is new. Uh, one thing I will point out is the... Um, when we look at this car in the United States, there is a four cylinder model. There has been a four cylinder model here only for the 2019 model year, and then it was discontinued. It basically did not sell a whole lot. We have a couple customers who bought one from our store. Uh, they love it, but it is not a car that sold well in Canada. So when we talk about power numbers, you're gonna see a lot of rumors around the web. Um, horsepower numbers, this one has three horsepower more than the last one. So that's enough to carry your COVID weight, the stuff that you put on while you're in quarantine. It's enough to carry it around, give it the same kind of performance. Uh, three horsepower is what you see, but you may see a significant difference in horsepower on some of the American ads. And that's because the four cylinder has gone from that two liter four cylinder that it used to have in something like our Sportage SX, and it has moved to the 2.5 liter turbo, which is something that we have in our K5 GT in our Sorento SX for 2021. So it is a very new motor there. Uh, I kind of wish we had the four cylinder because if we did, um, that would be worth talking about again. I think that's a real true performance car at that horsepower number, whereas the other one maybe was okay for performance, but it really wasn't what it should have been. And that's, I think, why they discontinued it here. This car we're talking about, V6 only, no more GT trim. There's a GT limited trim, which is tweaked. We're going to talk about some of those options. Um, but that's kind of the thing. If you see a horsepower uh, number that's more than the three horsepower increase of this car, it's the American model, not the Canadian one. So hopefully that helps. Let's hit some play here. I think we're going to skip past some of this stuff. Uh, there's just some imagery I want you guys to just kind of be able to see. If you haven't watched the video yourself, you can go watch it. Like I said, uh, kiavirtualautoshow.ca. All right. This is Elias, and he's coming up. He's an awesome guy. I've met him before, chat with him, like him quite a bit. 
got a really nice jacket on, but he's showing you a whole lot of nothing visually, so we're going to skip ahead to my friend Mr. Kopke. Mr. Kopke, if it's hatchback, those kind of things. Mr. Kopke is the head of marketing. We've done a video with him in the past. Uh, also a big fan of what he does. He does good stuff for us. So this is where the Kia Stinger, and I want to point, point that out one second real quick, if I could pause that. Kia Stinger won uh, 2019 or 2018 Car of the Year uh, for the Automotive Journalists Association. They're talking about that. It's won a lot of awards. And when it came out, um, it was very well recognized as one of the top automotive uh, sports cars in Canada. And torque numbers, they ask. Good question. Torque numbers the same. So the reason um, we're talking about the awards and people are talking about power and other stuff. Why isn't it up? Why isn't it down? Why isn't it this? Why isn't it that? The reality is this is still a class-leading car. Now, in Canada, it is priced almost the same number as it's priced in America. In the States, this is not a huge selling car. And that's because the equivalent, when you start comparing the dollar, is it's almost a $70,000 car in these states, whereas here it's 50 to 55 or so. Uh, it's a much more competitive car in Canada than in the United States because it has all the same features, if not more, and it has, um, and it has a better price point. So car of the year, they didn't tweak it a whole lot because it's already pretty great in the class. Red Dot, best of the best award. Um, so some of those awards were pretty cool when it won those. Uh, we're going to skip ahead to Mr. Kopke, if I can find my cursor here, which keeps disappearing. And there we go. Michael Kopke, he is the head of marketing for Canada, director of marketing, I guess is his official title. Um, he's going to show us a couple little specs and stats that we're going to just pull up here. Um, and again, he's talking about uh, the name, uh, pulling through there, how it handles. The interior is really an improved uh, area. We'll talk about that as we can get some pictures up of it. Uh, bear with me as I just look for this. I've only seen this once before we're live. I just want to make sure I get to the spot in the video where he starts talking about the things that I think are worth uh, showing to you guys. We'll talk about the interior. We'll talk about how everything's re very refined, but it's coming. Come on, we can do this. It looks like it was filmed maybe exhibition grounds or a couple of driving performance he's talking about. There we go. Design completeness. These are the words I'm looking for. High-tech specs. We're going to talk about the specs, the high-tech stuff that's coming to this car and new logo. Where are we? Come on. A couple more things. New wheels with the new logo on the wheels, which you can see. Very similar profile to the side. Um, those are nice. I think they look uh, nicely updated new wheels. The rear lights there. Um, so this is what I want to show. You're going to be able to tell the car from the back because it has new lights. It used to have sort of a um, halo sort of style light in here. Now you've got a full LED lighting across the back. And the exhausts are larger. So they will appear larger and they will make more noise, better noise. They do show it in the video, but it's hard to really get the sense of it. I'm going to try to get a real properly uh, filmed uh, video for you guys. Uh, we'll see it with launch control. We'll do some outside videos. We'll try to get some cool stuff for you guys with uh, proper microphones, not just my earbuds that I'm using today. So that's all coming. Uh, hi, Peter Brantford Kia Dude. Hello. Let's kind of get the Scorpion package like we do in the US. Uh, we do not have a Scorpion package. I'll tell you what we get in just a second. We'll go through some of that in a second. I just want to point out some of the things that are new. There's those tail lighting, the new logo there. Uh, new logo's also on the new minivan, the Carnival, which I saw today in Compound. It's very close to being at the dealer. We'll talk about that in a minute. So those larger exhaust ports, uh, more uh, better sound there as well. And he had a few other things. There we go. This is what I want to see. New color, Ascot Green. Haven't seen the Ascot Green in person. I have a picture of it here. Uh, it's not going to show great on the screen, which is why I'm not even going to bother showing it. Um, but there is a new color, Ascot Green. Everything else kind of carryover. Still got the Ghost Gray, which was that anniversary edition when it first came out. Uh, so we're looking forward to seeing that. We'll skip through some of this. There are some things. California Red, Atomic Blue. Those are real popular colors. Inside, check out the suede. There's a suede package in this car. Uh, yeah, it's paused. Ten and a quarter inch screen. You've got the, um, the D-cut steering wheel. A lot of the same look in here, but you can see that suede and the stitching. You've also got some areas here. You're going to see a little bit new area for the um, interior LED lighting, the interior ambient lighting. Uh, it's going to look pretty sharp. So again, the update on this car really is luxury on the inside. And I think the criticism with it in the past was um, excellent performance car. The best version of it was the Stinger for performance. However, there was a Genesis version, which was maybe a little bit more luxurious inside. They've answered that, uh, I'd say in spades. They've done a great job of answering the call to make it more luxurious and updated tech. That 10 and a quarter inch screen was needed. We had, um, you know, Kia Souls with 10 and a quarter inch screens, but we did not have a stinger with that. So that was kind of an awkward thing in the lineup. And really a lot of the safety tech, which we'll get into in a second. We're going to talk about some of those things. 
Um, there's that stitching in the lighting. You can see sort of that ambient lighting with the stitching. I think he used the word, we didn't miss a stitch kind of thing. It was kind of a good play on words in the video. And make sure you go watch this video at um, kiavirtualautoshow.ca. Uh, they've talked about an updated dash here. I don't see it here. This looks to be very similar, but I think they're talking about sort of the bezels out here. So we'll talk uh, take a better look at that when we get the car in person. Uh, we are expecting it at some point. I'm hoping still this month, but I haven't got an official date. Um, but this looks very similar to what we've got here. Some people were hoping for the full digital screen. Uh, I don't miss that. I think the um, gauges here are kind of nice, um, but I get that a lot of you like the digital screen and we do not have that at this point. So, um, but it was still a digital information in the center there. Coming through here, let's just keep playing. All right, let it play through a little bit. There's the D-cut steering wheel, a lot of nice touches. And they're really emphasizing the red in this video. Oh, a frameless mirror is one thing they talked about. Really tough to see in this uh, picture here. But the center mirror is frameless, which is new. Um, when the car comes from every key, will you review it? Absolutely. That's what we do here. Uh, can, the old, can the old logo be switched out on older Stingers? This is a question I've been asking about. Um, I've heard a rumor that if we have a Kia now that's a more modern Kia, we will be able to switch out logos. But I haven't had that confirmed. So maybe... Um, it is something I'm going to look into and try to find out because even on something like my Kia Soul, I would love to have the new logo. Now the catch is the outside logos may be able to switch, but I think the steering wheel logo is a little bit more of a costly switch and it may not be the identical steering wheel. Uh, so something like that, let's keep in mind, uh, but wheel logos and outside logos, that's something I'm trying to find out myself because I kind of want the new logo on my Kia Soul. Uh, so then again, just bigger screen, newer software, uh, looks like it's got driver one and driver two. So that's an important thing. Uh, a lot of our cars now, you can choose driver one, driver two, or guest in this center display screen. Uh, the fact that the Stinger has this is good. Now, what we need to find out next when it shows up is, is it like the K5? In the K5, when you switch driver one or driver two, you're not just changing things on the screen. For instance, your radio presets and some of your you know, widgets in a certain order. You're also able to change uh, the mirrors, the climate settings, and the seat to that driver. So I'm hoping the Stinger has the same thing but I don't know yet. Those are things that we can't tell from looking at the specs, but we will tell here. So if you wanna to subscribe to our channel, we will give you that information as it comes out. Um, if that driver one, driver two setting can change things. We can also see things on the steering wheel here. Uh, these are things that you may not notice, but the lane follow assist button is on the steering wheel, much like our Seltos, much like our um, Sorento K5. Um, these are things that have worked their way into other products, but now working their way into the uh, Stinger. So what that means is we had lane keep assist with the active assist, and that really only worked above 60 kilometers an hour. It had to see both lane markers. Great system where we have a video of the car. I think we called it Stinger with self-drive in one of our videos. And we show the car kind of going around a gentle highway bend, steering itself. Uh, now we have the more advanced system of that. So it doesn't have to see the lane markers to keep you centered. It can sort of figure out on its own. It can use the vehicle in front of you and it will work below 60 kilometers an hour. It will have things like highway drive assist, those types of things. So updated technology, uh, stuff that you're maybe not picking out the same way that I would be. Um, that's the, some of the things that I'm seeing here. Uh, there's that screen, looks really sharp. So they're going with this purple theme. Now, some of you know, I'm not a huge fan of the purple theme. Again, if ambient lighting is red, I'd love to have my ambient lighting and screen match. Key is going purple. It's what they're doing. So uh, don't hate it. Um, I've learned to get used to some of it. I was I gave them a hard time when they changed it because I took away some features that I liked on my other car. Uh, but when you come with a new car like this, it does really integrate well. So this is your new theme here, a little more subtle. Uh, of course, you can fill this screen with navigation, with all sorts of other things. But uh, that's your new home screen. Uh, things like your weather is up there. So we know that uh, already. Keep moving through here. Uh, there's just sort of the airbag area. You can see the stitching, the ambient lighting on the bottom and the top. So this line here is ambient lighting, stitching up there, red stitching down here. This is that suede package, which we'll talk about in just a second here. Um, I will take your questions in a second, guys. We just want to finish going through a couple of the pieces of this video. I do have the spec sheet in front of me, so I can answer some of those questions when you have them. And uh, we'll just show you there. Outside, headlights, I think, look a little different to me. I have to see it again. Yeah, they look a little different. There's that suede package. This is, again, in the door here. So red stitching, suede everywhere. It's going to look pretty cool. Uh, it's definitely going to feel a little more high-end. And to be fair, I think the last time I did a K5 versus a Stinger comparison, the K5 felt more luxurious inside. Um, and it was a much less expensive car. So the Stinger really was due for this. And uh, what is, it's funny how quickly times change. The 2021, or sorry, 2022 now, I guess model year, uh, compared to 2018, a lot has changed in your expectations of luxury in this price point. And uh, so Kia is really answering the call. I think you'll be happy 
with the inside of this car when you talk uh, when you when you pick it up. Uh, leather and suede mix. This is probably part of that suede package. Um, so you'll see some of that here, red stitching throughout. Um, yeah, just looks really sharp. And the one thing I saw right there, red seat belts. So uh, red seat belts are going to be available here, which is kind of cool. Um, very Porsche-like, Porsche-like, I should say. Uh, so there we go. Keep going down. Uh, just something new that I think is cool. I think if you're going to buy a cool, unique car like this, it should have some unique touches like that. And that's really the only complaint I had about the Stinger before is the interior just kind of missed the opportunity to really go full out. Um, the outside, of course, was very daring for Kia. The inside had a great dash, but some of those details like the, the suede package, the stitching, um, the red seat belt, those are just things that uh, I, I get that not everybody's a fan of those types of things, but it's the ability to go full out and make it really stand out. Uh, it's an extroverted car and it should be an extroverted interior as well. So there we go. New wheels, like we po pointed out, uh, larger rear exhaust or um, exhaust ports as well as the um, rear diffuser is going to be a different style. This is just showing the engine because it's fun to do that. Showing doing donuts and Brembo brakes because that's fun to do. Same gear shift. Looks like it might have a little texture on the top this time. Um, what have we got here? So, yeah, the new logo. Again, that's front and center. We're going to see that on just about everything coming in now. Available mechanical limited slip differential. That's a good thing. Um, performance driving, that's what you want. So we've got that. Uh, even in the all-wheel drive vehicle. That's the front radar plate. Nicely integrated. Again, a lot of just scenery shots in this, uh, which I don't mind. Drive modes are still there. Smart, eco, comfort, sport, custom. Same thing we had before. So no change there. Uh, the custom mode is very nice. You can customize the suspension. You can customize more things there than you can in our other cars. So uh, all five drive modes are there, which is perfect. And let's just keep rolling through. There we go. They're cycling through them. And da, da, da. yeah, so they're talking about here about those rear exhaust and larger diffuser. I think we're basically done looking at this. He's going to have a couple little uh, graphics show up here. And then we're just going to leave it short. Actually, we're near the end of this video anyway. So a lot of donuts. They didn't let me drive for that. I don't know why. I guess they didn't think I could do that, which I can. Um, but yeah, that'd be fun to do. So uh, there we go. Here's what I'm looking for. Advanced forward collision avoidance with junction turning. So this is a new safety feature. We have this in the K5. We have this on the Sorento. Uh, basically, the car, if I'm heading in an inter intersection and I'm about to turn left and there's a car, let's say, where you are coming towards me, if you decide to run the red light and I decide I'm looking where I want to go and I just want to go, if my car cuts in front of your car, the car is capable of stopping now. It's one of the most uh, common and severe collisions. And now this car is capable of avoiding, avoiding that. So advanced forward collision avoidance with assistance, uh, well, with assist and with junction turning. I screwed up that wording, but you guys can read it. You get what I'm saying there. The other thing I want to point out, a couple little things surprise here for me, safe exit warning. So safe exit warning uses your blind spot detection radar plate. Uh, and warns you before you open the rear door into traffic. Now, what's interesting is it's safe exit warning here, not safe exit assist. Safe exit assist can actually uh, child lock that rear door so that the inside door handle doesn't work and you don't open it up into traffic. Uh, the fact that I went with warning instead of assist was a little surprise for me because that's actually not top of the line technology. The assist would be the one that locks it. Now, maybe this is a mistake in wording. I didn't check my spec sheet, um, but I was expecting the full exit assist, which locks that door. These are minor things. Um, uh, not a real big deal, but just something that sort of surprised me. Navigation-based advanced smart cruise control. This is heading towards the road of self-driving cars. Um, we're not there yet, but there's a lot of benefits to that. Things like it can slow down uh, on a highway curve uh, for you. It can um, read traffic and those kind of things. So this navigation-based cruise uh, is a big deal. It's, it's, uh, it seems like nothing, but it's, it's kind of cool the way it's going to work out and where the future of some of that technology is going to head. Lane following assist, that's that button on the steering wheel. We talked about that. Blind spot collision avoidance. So instead of just uh, warning you of something in your blind spot, it's capable of steering you away from something in your blind spot, which is quite nice uh, to have and kind of expected now at that uh, price point. We have it in lower priced cars here. And that is about it. We're going to leave it right there with Mr. Kopke. We'll leave him up on screen. Ooh, that's not a great. Let's see if I can pause it on a better smile. Oh, there we go. We'll just leave it right there. You know what? We'll show you just. Uh, 10 and a quarter inch, yeah, so split screen capabilities, multi-device connectivity. Actually, we should point that out. Uh, the big screen, of course, uh, used to have a single phone connected to it at a time. Now what we've got is the ability to connect multiple phones. So if you're traveling with a passenger, you can have the driver can have their phone paired. So they get phone calls as well as the, um, as well as the um, audio. So if you have music on your phone, and maybe the passenger can play their audio from their phone. So that's that multi-device connectivity, which is kind of nice. Split screen capabilities here. 
um, which I believe is um, Android Auto Apple CarPlay related. I might be mistaken on that as I'm thinking off the top of my head. And what else we got here? Is there anything else coming up there? Let's just let it play. He's still talking about it. And I think we're going to come to a wrap. Yep, that's about it. Oh, available blind spot. Oh, blind view monitor. So this is kind of cool as well. So the blind view monitor, uh, we have this on the Telluride. We have this on the new Sorento SX, uh, Telluride SX and above. And what it does is it, when you signal to the left, for instance, it shows you what's in your blind spot. So we've got a Kia Carnival here, um, which is kind of funny that they show that because that's a car that's in compound right now and I can't get it. Uh, hopefully we'll see that very soon. Uh, but yeah, so they've got, uh, when you signal left, you see a blind spot. When you signal right, you'll see the blind spot in the display screen. It's kind of a wow feature when you first use it. You get this crystal clear screen in the center of your display showing you exactly what's beside you. Uses the surround view camera. So there's cameras in the mirrors that usually look down. It uh, redirects the software in them to look behind you and uh, stitches it together so it looks like that. Very cool feature. It's a bit of a wow feature. Uh, so yeah, kind of expected that in the Stinger. And we've got it, Uvo Intelligence. Oh, the Uvo Intelligence will have things like heated seats. My Kia Soul right now, my Uvo Intelligence, when I start my car, uh, I have a Kia Soul EV 2020. When I start my car, I can turn on my heated steering wheel, but not my heated seat. Seemed like an oversight to me. He was like, yeah, let's make the seats warm up with the Uvo Intelligence. So they have that uh, on the Stinger. And again, those suede seats probably won't get as cold as the, everything else. Smart key remote engine start. So that is, again, remote start, not just on your cell phone. It's now on the key fob itself. So that's a good thing. Now, the Stinger has a unique key. It's the only one with the detonator style key. That's what I call it. Um, that has the round button on top. Everything else is uh, square. So we'll see if we continue to get a unique key for the Stinger or if they've just decided to do the same key as everything else. Uh, but it's always had sort of a leather wrap feel. And um, now it's got a smart key remote. So we'll see if it has the same key. There we go. GT Limited, 50495 Now, if you say, hey, GT Limited now is XYZ, you do lose a couple features. There's no GT anymore. There's only a GT Limited. Uh, the GT Limited seats are only in the GT Elite trim now. Uh, so you have those really multi, multi adjustable seats. So you've got good seats in the GT Limited now, but really just the GT seats moved up. GT Limited seats with the multi adjustability is now into the GT Elite trim. Um, so interesting packaging. You're gaining a lot of software in this car but you lose a couple minor features. We did a Kia Stinger, why you may want to, it's a, the ghost gray one. Uh, we did it recently and it's why you may want to buy the current model year Kia Stinger. We did that video where we talked about some of those features that uh, have changed, uh, but we're moving on from there now. So GT Limited is not the same as the GT Limited before. You get more things like adjustable seats, but less technology than now. GT Elite is probably where, if you've looked at the GT Limited in the, in the past, GT Elite is probably where you want to be. And then there's a GT Elite suede package as well. So we'll just jump up here. Um, I think that's very good pricing. I know that you got, I, I have a bias here, but when you look at the United States, they're gonna see similar numbers uh, and it's gonna be you know, American dollars and that uh, makes it closer to a $70,000 car. All right, I think that's it. Are we done here? I think so. We'll leave it right like that. All right, let me go through your questions. If I've missed your question, please ask it again. I think it's poor video when I'm just sitting there rare, uh, looking at them. Uh, but if you have a question, ask it. And if not, I'll go to the spec sheet. We'll go from there. It's uh, 2.23 on my clock right now. I will stay on until about 2.30, and uh, we'll go from there. I love how it's showing the carnival, yeah. Is there a feature button to put the steering wheel on the right side of the car? So we, we've got uh, someone from the other side of the pond, as they would say. And sorry, guys, I'm just looking for my cursor. It's There we go. I can't bring it across because it's not letting me. Where are we? Where are we? I'm stuck on the side. There we go. There we go. I got my cursor back on this side. Uh, so let me scroll through here. Not like I'd have people in the back seat anyway. Oh, Stinger's got a great back seat. It's a very comfortable back seat. We'll show you that when it gets here. So here's where we're headed, just so you know. Uh, the next seven minutes, obviously, I'm going to talk about the specs of this car. If you want to know them, I have them in front of me. The other thing we're going to do is um, when this car arrives, so I'm hoping, I'm, I'm just going to put a flat out, hit the subscribe button, because when this car arrives, nobody's going to go through it in more detail, detail than I will. Um, I've got a really good sense of what the old car was. I really want to compare it to the new car. We'll try to get them side by side if we can, although we don't have any 2021s in stock anymore. Uh, but we're going to go through this car really, really in depth. We're going to talk about what's new. We're going to see that not just what they tell us what's new, but what we can actually see that's different. Um, so let me see. Somebody said, please hit the like button. Yeah, usually I ask for likes by now. Uh, I got about 39 or so likes. Let's try to get to 50. Can we get 11 more likes and get to 50 likes? Um, will this... Wait, will the suede still allow for ventilated seats? My understanding 
is yes, they will. Um, there is some perforations you can see in this video when you watch it up close. Again, you can see it at kiavirtualautoshow.ca. Uh, I do expect them to still be uh, to still allow that uh, ventilation to come through. So good question. Um, what else we got? New logo doesn't have an oval and looks like it printed directly on the car. So unless there's an oval version of the new logo, then I don't know. Yeah, we're talking about fitting that new logo on older cars. That's part of my question as well. Some of them have oval areas, some of them do not. Uh, so we're going to have to see how that works. I don't think you can directly fit this logo on the old car, but there might be a replacement somehow system. I don't know. I heard somebody say uh, that you could maybe buy logos and throw them on the old cars. So whether that's true or not, we'll find out. Uh, what's the difference between the Stinger and the K5? A lot. The K5 is a front-wheel drive car that has all-wheel drive. The Stinger is a rear-wheel drive performance car that has all-wheel drive. They are different all-wheel drive systems. Um, I've driven this car, the previous version, on the track. Um, I learned to drive it from a race car driver, and I also went around uh, two different times with race car driver, professional drivers around the track. There is no way at all that the K5 can keep up on a track with this car, even if you gave the same amount of power. Um, the handling of this car, the, the refinement of a performance car, this car is absolutely better uh, than the K5. So the K5, think of it as a uh, sporty family car, uh, certainly with better sport abilities than ever before from Kia on anything front-wheel drive. Um, but it is a front-wheel drive performance car in the GT, Lower trim levels have less horsepower. They're all-wheel drive. They handle very well, but they are, you know, what they used to call family sedans. A very, very good, very athletic family sedan. This is a sports car. So they're just built from the ground up differently. There's a cost difference as well, and that's a big thing. So uh, good question there. Um, da -da -da -da. Can you debadge the front Kia badge? I guess you could. Is there an official purchase date for Kia Canada? That's a good question. So the launch was today. Uh, we follow these cars in over port and sea and shipping and, and rail and everything else. Uh, we do have an expected arrival date. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I'm mixing up my carnival and other stuff. I think the carnival is arriving first before the end of the month. Uh, this will be arriving soon after from what I understand. But these are flexible. So um, personally, I'm hoping to see one as early as this month. Uh, I think certainly in April we'd be able to do it. As far as purchasing itself, if you've seen enough and you want to buy, uh, give us a call, 519-304-6542. We, we sold more Kia Nero EVs before they had landed than anybody else in the country. So we're certainly capable of walking you through, making sure you're comfortable with what you're buying. Um, we can walk you through if you'd want to buy one now, if you want to reserve one right away, uh, we can do that for you. So you can give us a call, reach out to us. Uh, you can even reach out to me directly and I'll direct you to our sales team, uh, peter at brantfordkia.ca. Uh, so if you want to buy one now, you can. When they actually arrive, I don't have a specific date yet. I'll try to get that nailed down for you. But even when we have that, it's usually a week. We get it within this week, we should see it. Um, and that's sort of how it works. Now, we have the benefit of being near a compound where they store the cars. So we don't wait for it to get on a truck. If we know this car is ready for pickup, I'll go down there and get it. And I did that this morning. We saw the Kia Carnival sitting there. Uh, it's not ready to give to all the dealers yet. So therefore, we don't get it. Uh, but it is available. So we will have that. Um, does Canada not get the sequ sequential turns signals the Asian market gets. I don't know. It doesn't seem like they showed that and I feel like they would have. Um, so again, we'll have to see when the car shows up what we get. I, I don't know. It might be a trim level thing. Uh, this car, obviously they use a single car for the video. Um, I don't, and this is obviously, this is going to be a pre-production car likely because the cars aren't out. So I, it didn't seem to show in the video and I saw that as well. I don't know. Uh, so late excuse me. Rear view digital mirror. So no, not a digital mirror, but a frameless rear view mirror. Uh, just uh, sort of a newer style. Uh, actually, some of our Teslas have that. Somebody says Scorpion slash black package, uh, Nightfall package. Uh, short answer is no and no. Um, not for 2022 model year. There's no uh, additional packages. The uh, Ascot green color is new. There's the GT Limited, GT Elite, and GT Elites with a suede package. Um, but no black package. I, I haven't, I've intentionally stayed away from the American side because I want to make sure I um, see what they bring. I want to make sure I got the Canadian one, not mixed up with the American one, but I will take a look at what uh, they've done as well. Is the black exterior trim pack going to be on Canada? So essentially, no, there's no black package for 2022. Um, I'm going to obviously have to go watch the American launch. I've stayed away from everything American news guys, just because this launched at one o'clock and I had to go live at two o'clock. So if I started watching American stuff, I might mix up in my own mind. You guys know more about the American one at this point. 
than I do, uh, but I will uh, update that. Is the neon orange color still an offer? No, neon orange was this year only, a 2021 model year only. It is already gone. If you can find it on a dealer lot, buy it because it's the last one. So the new model, uh, no orange color. Like I said, only that Ascot green is the new color, which I think is going to look really sharp. Uh, let's see what else we have. Anything else? If I've missed your question, feel free to ask it again. A lot of time I say you don't have to ask a question four or five times, but I, if I missed it, you may have asked it four or five times. It's a little different when I do it like this. I'm trying to look at the camera, and when I read it, I can see things coming through. So are the wheels and tires the same front and rear? So uh, different sizing front and rear. You have uh, staggered. The rear wheels are wider. That's how they've always been. Uh, you know, off the top of my head, I don't remember the exact width, uh, but the rear wheels are wider. Uh, certainly the design is new, so there will be a matching pattern in the front and rear, but they are wider tires in the rear. Um, Ascot Green looks nice from the videos I've seen. Yeah, from what I've seen, the, a couple pictures I've seen of Ascot Green is good. Uh, the only thing I can show you, yeah, it doesn't, it looks like a black, it doesn't show well, so I'm not even gonna throw it on the screen. You can search the internet for Ascot Green better than I can show you on this screen. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so I think we've covered everything. It is 2.30. Uh, those of you who are regulars with us, I just want to say one thing before we wrap this up. I am going to make an announcement on Friday, a personal good announcement. Uh, so I'm going to make a video. We're going to do a premiere. I'll probably launch it, say, Friday, maybe 11 o'clock or so. Uh, but that is coming up from me. So I'm going to probably film something today, tomorrow. Uh, we'll launch that as a premiere. So we'll all have the countdown. I'll chat along with you. Uh, but I do have a big announcement to make on Friday. Can't say anything else right now. Uh, but those of you who are regulars with us, who watch us all the time, uh, if you're chatting with the other regulars, let them know Friday we'll be launching a premiere video, probably 11 in the morning. I don't know exactly. We'll figure that out. Um, but look for that. That is coming up from me. I just want to make sure I mention that because we've got some changes coming. Uh, what does the Elite have that the GT doesn't have? Let's just quickly jump in. I can answer that question really quickly. Uh, the Elite, I'm just scrolling through the thing, the page here. So the Elite... These are things the Elite has that the GT doesn't. Limited slip differential, Napa leather interior, air cell lumbar seat with bolster adjustment. So side bolsters that adjust on their own, which is what we used to have for the um, limited seats. Now they're into the uh, uh, Elite package. Uh, upgraded headliner material, upgraded pillar material. So probably a suede looking or a um, uh, that type of material on the uh, headliner, uh, which again, used to be on the limited, it's now not. Driver cushion extension. So again, those updated seats that used to be in the limited, they're now moved to the elite. Uh, auto up, down, and safety windows in the rear. Big whoop. I mean, I'm sure that matters to somebody, but not something you're going to see in a ad. Bifunction dynamic bending LED headlights. Headlights that turn and can move around a little bit. Um, the LED headlights that do that are going to be on the GT Elite. The 360 uh, degree camera monitoring system. So that 360 view, that bird's eye view of the car. A 360 camera that is on the elite now not the limited anymore blind spot view monitor so that's that uh display in the center of your dash that shows your blind spot when you signal left or when you signal right it'll show the blind spot in there and the heads up display so a lot of things that used to be on the limited are now in the gt elite package now you say oh i lost stuff in the limited the reality is um the gt limited gains a whole bunch of safety and technology over what it had, but it does lose some of those things. So basically the former GT is gone. The GT Limited is kind of an in-between model, more technology, but some of the GT stuff still in that GT Limited model. Uh, GT Elite is what you used to consider the GT Limited, but now with all the new stuff added, that's really the best way to say it. And while we're at it, GT Elite, suede seat inserts, suede dashboard trim, red accent stitching, and red seat belts. So those red seat belts are in the GT Elite with the suede package. Um, and that's what we've got. Let me go back to the questions. Da, 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 da. Okay, where are we? Uh, just going to go through your questions again here. Struggling with the time zone, Jane. Sorry about that. What does the Elite have? The okay, we talked about that. EV6 announcement. That's not the announcement. It's a uh, announcement about me, essentially. Uh, sounds like you're getting promotion or doing more videos for corporate. It can sound like anything you want. I don't think it's EV6. Da, 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 da. This is amazing. Keep it up. All right. We're going to wrap it up right there, guys. So like I said, I'm going to be making an announcement, big announcement on Friday. So we'll probably do it at 11 o'clock just because I threw that out. So that seems like a good thing. Look for a premiere video. That's the video that tells you, hey, this video is coming on Friday. And I'll sit down and watch it with you guys. And then we'll still do the live on Friday at 2 o'clock as well. So big announcement coming up Friday on this channel. 
Uh, tune in for that. We'll have more on that later. And uh, here's the new Stinger. If you want to buy the car, give us a call, 509-304-6542. You can reach out to me through email. Um, I can hook you up with our sales team as well. Uh, whatever you want to do, if you want to see it. And of course, subscribe to the channel. Um, when this comes out, uh, we're going to have more for you. So lots going on. Uh, there we go. So we'll just leave it like that. I've got to walk over to the camera to stop it. So thanks everybody for joining us. We will see you again tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to do K5 GT versus K5 GT line. Two different engines. One's got all-wheel drive, one doesn't. Uh, a little bit different interiors. A lot of differences between those two cars. So we're going to talk about that in depth because I haven't seen it done on uh, video yet the way I like it. And uh, that's what we'll do tomorrow live at 2 o'clock. So we'll see you then. Thanks, everybody. I'm walking around the camera to say goodbye.